<laughs> Who said Variety was dead? Anyway, <laughs> welcome everybody uh, of the Countdown Appreciation Society and one or two others uh, to our last show of the week. Um, we've had a lot of fun this week. Uh, well, I th <laughs> well, in a relative sort of way, relative term, fun, isn't it? And a lot of letters for you. Thank you very much for your emails. There's one more, Carol. Oh yes, go which on. you now you haven't liked on this. You've been a bit sort of snurplish towards the viewers. No, I have not been at all snurpyish or whatever you said. Well, I think you've towards, been a bit towards our viewer. A bit smingish, actually. <laughs> but you're gonna you will like this from David Wallen of uh, South End on Sea. Okay. Yeah. Dear Carol, I confess to you, it strikes me rather funny. With all your charms and looks and brains, and let's be honest, money, despite the fact that every show he must get on your wick. <laughs> you still subject yourself somehow to suffer daily dick. <laughs> he constantly bombards you with his awful puns and jokes, but you could surely spend your days with far more charming blokes. They're lining up to meet you, girls, so keep their hopes alive. Choose one bloke from the front row, and then any other five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, dear, oh dear. Well, have you got you in the mood, everybody? Are you still there? Yeah. Oh, thank goodness. Right, well, still here, I'm delighted to say. He's got to be here because... Uh, Strapped behind his desk, he's got to be here, and he wants to be. I'm sure our new, ch well, new. He's uh, twice, uh, twice a champ now. Newish champion Jeremy Slaney, and brand new challenger Tracy Mills. <laughs> now here he is, picture of health, the real outdoor type. There he is. The uh, where do you do all your uh, woodsmanship, Jeremy? It's at um. It's at, um, it's domestic clients rather than um, commercial. Rather than commercial. It's oh, all right. But well, anyway, it's outdoors, anyhow. Oh it's yes, whereabouts that's right. in the outdoors? Whereabouts in the country? Um, it's within about a ten a ten mile radius from um, where I live near Ashford. All right. <laughs> anyway, we now talking about romantic. We have Tracy Mills. That's a good name. And now, the Tracy Mills show. Tracy lives in Hayton Moor in Stockport. She's married to Mark and works as a housewife and mother to her two sons, Scott and Ryan. She's a fan of Manchester United. <laughs> and she enjoys pub quizzes and playing Scrabble. She says her ambition is to go on safari in Kenya. So she's hoping to serengeti enough points <laughs> to ensure she'll be playing again on Monday. So good luck to Tracy Mills. Last time our G of the D beat our contestants with a seven letter word megabit. Megabit, is word they tell me that's used in computing. So on his last appearance before a hard drive home, it's Britain's favourite and richest lyricist, Don in the Black, with, <laughs> <laughs> with Richard Sampson. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> now then, Don. Yeah, well, it's been a fabulous week. But it isn't over yet. Certainly the best isn't. is yet to come. Perhaps you, you absolutely, never a truer word. OK. Jeremy and Tracy, off you go, Jeremy. Consonant, please, Carol. Thank you. V. And a second one? R. And a third? S. A vowel, please. O. A second vowel? E. And a third one? A. A consonant? C. Another consonant? B. And finish off with a consonant. Thank you, Jeremy. Oh, dear me. Z. Ah. Uh, right, right, right. There's the Z. We've got the A and the Z. Here we go. Yes, Jeremy. I'll try a seven. Right, sir. Tracy. Six. Right, what have you got, Tracy? Covers. Covers. Yes, for six. Now seven he's trying. Uh, Beezles. B E Z O A R S. Beezles. What were they? Fantastic 
Bezoars are wild goats with flat scimitar-shaped horns found from Greece to Pakistan. Well done. Excellent work. Very good. That's, that's not a bad word, eh? <laughs> how did you... Uh, how do you know that, Jeremy? Um, it, through seeing Countdown over a number of years, <laughs> I remember it coming in um, <laughs> Dictionary Corner. Well, I've completely forgotten it, so that's fantastic. What have you got, Don? Um, that's all we have. We didn't uh, improve yeah. on that. But just we had bravos as well. Bravos, to match it, right. but, hey. bravos. OK, right. Well, that's a very good for Jeremy there. Seven and uh, nothing yet to Tracy. Right, Tracy, your turn. Consonant, please. Thank you, Tracy. H. And another one. Mm, yeah. T. And again. N. Vowel, please. E. And another one. U. Another vowel. I. Consonant. D. A consonant. P. And a final vowel, please. And a vowel, thank you. And A. OK, here we go. Yes, Tracy. Seven. Good. Jeremy? Seven. Right, Tracy, seven. Painted. Yes, painted there, good. Off the mark with that. Don? I've uh, got painted as well. Sorry. Absolutely. Oh, Terrific. Sorry, sorry Jeremy. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, Petunia, which is at just seven, and Haunted. So, no improvement on seven. Nope. I they've painted one of those words there. Right. Okie dokie, Jeremy. Consonant, please, Carol. M. And a second one. G. And a third. L. A vowel, please. E. A second vowel. O. And a third vowel. I. A consonant. F. A, a vowel. O. And a consonant. Thank you. And R. <coughs> Right, I'm starting the clock. Jeremy. Eight. Mac. Tracy. Eight. Oh, good. Right. Jeremy's eight. Gloomier. <laughs> Gloomier. Right. Tracy. Gloomier. Believe Gloomier. That's it. Yeah, we got excited about film goer, but that's not in. Oh, film goer. Yeah, but it's not in the it No, that. Well, what do you mean? It's two words, is it? Yeah, it's, it, it would be two words. Yes, it's, it's film goer would be nice, wouldn't it? But gloomier. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's. Well, there it is. But it's eight. Good. 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 Uh, scores go up by the 8, 22 and 15. Tracy. Consonant, please. Thank you. T. And another one. S. And again. M. And another consonant. R. Vowel, please. U. Another vowel. E. Another vowel. I. Consonant. T. And... Another vowel, please. And A. Thank you. I start the clock. Tracy? Seven. Seven. Jeremy? Eight. Seven. 
Uh, mutters. Mutters. Yes, mutters. Eight. Smuttier. Very good. Smuttier. Excellent. And yeah. we, had a, we had another eight. Maturist. Maturist. So, 30, 15. And Jeremy numbers, please. One from the top, please, Carol. And then an inverted T downwards. So, any one from the top? Yes, yeah. any one from the top. And then an inverted... Oh, from there. Oh, hang on now. I've really confused myself. From here? Yes, from the... No, yeah, yeah, that's fine, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just easier to say yes, isn't it, really? Yeah. Was that right, Jeremy? No. <laughs> I think it's the answer. Right, so we have, anyway, two, four, six, two and eight. All evens. And a hundred, which is even. And an even target, 238. Okay, 238, 238, 238, we say to Jeremy. Have you got it? 238. Ah, well, there's a smile of a man who thinks he's got it. Tracy? 234. Oh, Tracy. Oh, dear. Right, well, let's look at 238. Um, 100 times 2 is 200. Y yes, it is. Then 8 times 4 is 32. It is. And add 6, which... And you get 238. Yes, 238. Yes. Yeah. OK, well done. He's got the 10 points, everybody. OK, uh, right, 40 and 15. Time for you, Don. Right. I, I wanted to tell you about this um, silly but delightful book I came across in California. It's called The Worst Case Scenario Survival Handbook. It's an advice book, a step-by-step -step list of instructions in the unlikely event you come face-to-face -face with catastrophe. I found it pretty useless but very amusing. Here are some of the, uh, the chapters. How to survive if your parachute fails to open. <laughs> How to jump from rooftop to rooftop. <laughs> How to cross a piranha-infested river. <laughs> Only in America could this book happen. I particularly found quite hilarious the one entitled How to Escape from a Mountain Lion. <laughs> this is what you do. Do not run. <laughs> Try to make yourself bigger by opening your coat wide. If you have small children, pick them up. Do all you can to make yourself larger. If the lion behaves aggressively, throw stones. Back away slowly and report any lion sightings to authorities. <laughs> and this other one, which is amazing. How to foil a UFO abduction. This could come in very handy. Here's what you do. Do not panic. Control your thoughts. Do not think of anything violent or upsetting, as the aliens may have the ability to read your thoughts. Try to avoid, men avoid mental images of abduction. Such images may encourage them to take you. <laughs> Physical resistance should only be used as a last resort. Go for the aliens' eyes if they have any. You will not know what its <laughs> other more sensitive areas are. <laughs> Invaluable information, I think. Uh, oh, exactly. Well,